Hello! Um, in this video I'll be recreating a famous garden in the software Garden Planner. And this particular video in the series I'll be recreating Bowling Green Park in Lower Manhattan in New York, USA. It's the oldest park in New York City. So let's have a look at it. Um, this is a Google map of it. If we zoom in you can see Google represents it as a kind of triangle there. Um, but this is the final plan, let's have a look, and actually you can see the, the park itself is more of a teardrop shape um, with an iron fence around it, gravel in the middle, and a, a major feature is a fountain in the centre. And we can have a look at it in the 3D view in Garden Planner, and there you go, that's what it looks like. Um, if you look at the 3D view in Garden Planner, the exact same 2D plane you just saw. So, okay, let's get started. Now we'll switch to satellite view. Um, and then we'll take a screenshot of satellite view and bring that into Garden Planner. Uh, first we'll zoom in. Actually there's something useful we can do here. If we zoom in, it's not a great satellite view. Um, the trees are covering the boundary and um, the light's not very good. But um, on Google you can do right click measure distance and I can measure the size of that fountain in the middle of the actual pond of fountains within. And I can see there that it's about 15 metres or just under 50 feet. Um, it's defaulting to metric there because I'm in Australia. Um, but you can work with metric or um, US measurements in Garden Planner. Okay, so I've got that. I'll take a screenshot of it. Um, and then I'll just take that into any image editor. I'm, here I'm just using Windows Paint. You could use Mac Paint if you're on a Mac or Photoshop or whatever you want. And I'll just paste in the screenshot and then we've got it there. I, so I can crop it and have a more reasonable size image to work with in Garden Planner. Now at the bottom of a Google image, there's a scale and I'll just scroll down to that. And you can see tiny little thing in the bottom right corner says 10 meters is equivalent to that size. And just by drawing a line, I can measure that and see that that's about 90 pixels. So 90 pixels of my image is equivalent to 10 meters in the real world, which is useful to know um, when I'm scaling the image when I bring it into Garden Planner. So let's go back to Garden Planner. And one moment, please. Okay, here we are. And I'll create a new plan and just call it something like Bowling Green. There we go. Bowling Green Park, okay. Um, and okay, new plan. Now I can import that image I created. Um, so it was just a screenshot that I just took in the paint and cropped. And um, I'll bring it in. Ah, now I can choose to resize the image. And because I measured it, I know that. Um, 90 pixels on the image is equivalent to 10 meters. Uh, that would appear in US measurements if you had your settings to US. But um, I'm in Australia, so I'm doing it with metric. Oh, uh, whoa, the image is way too big. So I, that's okay. I'm going to change the scale to something more reasonable. So change scale and just choose large landscape because this is a large public park. And really, it's hard to see, isn't it? It's really poor lighting on that satellite image. Um, if I turn off a grid, though you should be able to see it. I'll just zoom out a little bit first. Oops, and turn off the grid. And there you can see the park. Um, I'm going to have to do a bit of guessing. But the most obvious element there is the pond in the middle. So I'll start with that. That's a key element. Um, remember I measured that too when I was looking at in the satellite view. So I know that it's about 15 meters. So I know there's a round pond about 15 meters in the middle. It's a good starting point. When I do a plan, I go with whatever's the biggest, most obvious reference point as the starting point. Um, so that's 15 meters by 15 meters. And I'll just move it into place. Okay, so we've started our plan there. And actually, we've done the most important key feature of Bowling Green Park, but it's not much of a park yet. Um, around the edge there, we can see there's a garden bed with flowers. Uh, it has red flowers. I think some points of the year it's tulips, other points it's gardenias, or all sorts of things. Um, we'll do those flowers in a minute. First we'll put the garden bed they're planted in around there. Um, 18, that might be a bit small. Let me look at it. Yeah, that looks a little bit too small for my guesses. So I might just change that to 
90 meters. So just putting the values there in the properties window. You could just resize it, but it's more precise to type them in and just align everything up. Okay, so we've got a pond and our garden bed around it. Now around that we've got some a gravel path. I could draw a path, but I think it's simpler and easier just to draw a circle of gravel. So I'll just do that. Uh, a little hard to see the lines there on that very dark background image. Um, and I'll resize that to an appropriate value. Um, so that it fits in. That's not doesn't look quite right. So let's um, adjust the sizing to uh, 24 meters. Um, of course, as I've said before, all of this can be done in um, feet and inches if you prefer. Uh, there's an option on the bottom right corner there to switch between it or from one of the menus. Okay, so now we have our gravel path, our garden bed and our pond. So there's still more to it. Um, the key thing is there's a lawn. Uh, I'm just going to draw one big lawn. I've chosen garden bed and I'm just using the drawing tool to draw out roughly where the edges of the lawn are. Now I can't see it here, the trees are obscuring the edge, but I know from having a look at some photos online that um, the trees are all slightly within the fence line and the boundary line of the garden bed, so of the lawn, sorry. Um, so if I just draw a rough shape around there um, and double click in, okay, that's what we've got now. That's far from perfect, um, and I can just gently modify it. Although I'm going to skip forward here, um, so you don't have to watch the boringness of me. Modif and there it is, all modified. There, save some time. Um, but I've just moved it all out. Just I just adjusted some of the corners and the curves to make it look more realistic. Okay, so we've, we're getting there. Um, I'm going to use the layers option, which is in the bottom right corner, just to hide. Um, the ground cover, which try transparent, and no, I still can't really see anything. Um, so I think I'll probably, yeah, if I turn off the grid, not quite. Okay, so we'll uh, hide that completely. And the next thing I need to do is, um, I think I'll add in the path, because there's a circle gravel path around the garden bed that surrounds the fountain, and then there are two gravel paths going from the entrance to the circle and back again. So you have one going from the top entrance into the park down to the circle gravel path, and another one at the bottom going to the other. And I'll just adjust the depth there. It was placing that underneath, and it should be placing on top. And... Um, we'll draw the other path. Again, it's almost impossible to see it under those trees, but I have looked at pictures of this um, street view picture, so I've got a pretty clear sense of where the path goes to. Um, I haven't actually been to this park. I think I went there once in the late 1990s, but I haven't been there any time recently. Um, so this is recreating a part of the world without actually having visited it, just by looking at satellite images and street view images. Um, but at the end of it, we'll be able to walk around it, which is, well, in a 3D sense, which is kind of exciting. So I'll just adjust all of this. It's a little bit rough and ready, this. Um, the version of the plan I showed you at the start um, took me just under an hour to do. This one I'm rushing through and trying to do it in under 20 minutes because it would probably be boring to watch me fiddling every minor detail for an hour. Um, but even then, building a whole... 2D and 3D landscape plan of a prominent uh, public park in less than an hour is pretty impressive. Okay, so let's just hide that. And what haven't I done? The trees and the boundary fence are yet to do. So what should I start with here? I think I will... Um, I'll go with the fence. So I just need to, uh, I'll put the, no, it doesn't really help to have a grid on, I think. Uh, I know, if I bring the ground cover, then I can just make the fence follow um, around the edge of the, the, fe the um, fence follows the lawn. Actually, I'll do the trees first, because they're quite prominent. So the trees, um, 
are located around the edges. So you can see from satellite image, they were quite big, much bigger than the default size that's coming out for that deciduous tree. Um, I think they're plain trees, but I'm not 100% certain. So I'm going to make them a bit bigger. Um, six meters doesn't seem quite wide enough, so I'll make it about seven, eight meters. So if you adjust the size of a tree, it's also a good idea to adjust the height of it. Otherwise you might have a very tall, uh, a very wide but very short tree, which may be what's in your garden um, or in the park you're replicating. And I'm just duplicating that tree and sticking it around at the edges. Um, again, the plan that I'll put on the website of this is a little bit more refined. I've tried to exactly place the trees in the locations that they are in the real, real world park. But for this demonstration, I'm just approximating. I know they're fairly evenly spaced um, around the edges. And I'll just make a few of them slightly different sizes because in the real world, not every tree is exactly the same size. Um, so it will look a bit more realistic and maybe a couple of them can be rotated slightly. That makes it look um, a bit more realistic. Okay, so we're getting there with our park. Um, we've got a pathway through the center. We've got a garden bed, we've got a pond, we've got a grass lawn and we've got our trees. I won't do it, but in the final version, I also added some shrubs around the edges because there happen to be um, a few small shrubs around the edge and a um, few other minor details. Okay, let's finally do that fence. So there's an iron, um, uh, probably a very old iron fence um, running around the boundary of the lawn of the park. Um, so it just follows the same kind of teardrop shape as the park. I'm just going to click, 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 really roughly kind of draw out the straight lines and then I can adjust it using the uh, green circles to adjust the curves um, to make it smoother. But I'll just, I'll draw the other side first. So just drawing that iron fence out. A little boring to watch, but not too bad. Um, okay. So just about there, and there we are, there's our iron fence. And I'll smooth that out um, just by, oops, not clicked on, I've clicked on the, that's the fence, as opposed to clicking on the, so I can just drag the corners and adjust it till it all kind of smoothly flows. And there I've just jumped ahead so you didn't have to see the boringness of me um, adjusting things. And you know, like you don't have to make things perfect and accurate, but in this case, I want to make it nice. Oh yes, there is a, I'm going to draw out here, just a little circle. Um, there's a, oops, little jump there. Um, a little, uh, like a hoop fence, just around the edge, I guess, so people don't walk into the flowers or climb, children don't climb into the fountain, something like that. So there's a little hoop edge, uh, around the garden bed, so I'll just add that in. And now the flowers. Um, now, like I said, they have red flowers at different times of the year. Um, uh, I th I'm gonna go with geraniums, because I do know that they have red geraniums at some points of the year, other points have tulips. Tulips are small, I'd have to add lots and lots to fill it up. As you can see, it would take a while to add in all the geraniums. Um, and I might not make you watch all of that. I may, I'll just show you, I'll add a few, and then um, we can, jump forward in time and there you go all of them added in and just looking in the notebook section you can see I added in 43 uh, orangey red geraniums okay what else do we need oh there's some lamps there are a couple of just classic New York City Park street lamps um, they look very small that's because you know from a 2D perspective they really don't take up a lot of space it's all vertical and not a lot of horizontal. I could probably zoom in a bit more, but this is easy enough. Um, I know the ones at the two entrances, there's actually a few more. Again, like I said, in the detail plan I'll put on the website, um, I've got them all in what I think is the exact positions they are in the actual park. But here I'm just doing a bit of random lamp placing uh, so that we can get th through this a little quicker. Okay, so we're looking pretty good now. Um, what? haven't we got um oh, a fountain in the middle okay so there's a sprouting you know splurting 
fountain thing in the middle because, you know, that's what you have in public parks. It looks attractive. This is a big plan, if you think about it. Like a 50-foot um, pond with a giant fountain isn't something you normally have in your backyard. But you can do it in Garden Planner um, because you can do landscaping projects like this. That's what this example is. Now, what I've left out, and it's kind of critical for any New York City park, is park benches. Um, and so just zoom in a bit there, and we've got the benches. They look small. That's because this is a very big park. And I can rotate it with a rotation tool, or I can set a number. I actually prefer to just fiddle around with setting values, but either way works. Um, and here I've just rotated it, and then I'll just place one park bench. Now I'm going to need a lot more, so I'll duplicate that. And again, um, you don't have to see me do all of this, so um, I'll just pause and skip ahead. There you go. And you there are the park benches. Um, in the final plan, in the real world, they're a bit more of a grey colour. Oops, sorry, jump there. And I've added some park benches just around the edge of the curved path or gravel path there and I want to put some on the other side here's a simple trick just select um, them all oops I didn't select I select something else what did I do there um, one moment I'll, um, I'll just redo it uh, select select just select each bench I think I must have selected the gravel as well there um, Okay, there I've selected uh, one, two, three, four, five, and then just duplicated them. And then I can just select those five duplicated ones. And the reason I'm doing this is because then, um, oh, six, is it five or six? Anyway, um, we'll just rotate it uh, 90 degrees, 90 degrees again, and just drag the selection of benches over. And there we go. We've um, place those without having to go through the tedious process of carefully rotating them. So there we've got our benches nicely aligned on the gravel around the edge um, so people can see it and stare at the sprouting fountain all day or eat their lunch or look at their phone or whatever people in Lower Manhattan do. Um, and that's pretty close to it. Um, if I was taking more time I would add in um, some a few more trees actually there are I think I should put in there are a couple of trees as you come in from the top entrance coming down there are a few there are two big trees right at the entrance so I'll just stick those in easy enough and there's some small kind of shrubby trees just along the edge there so I might as well put them in I think there are a few flowers just at the end of the initial path but I won't bother with that today but I'll put that in the Again, the plan version. So let's have a look at it in 3D. Now, when you do something in 2D in Garden Planner, it comes out in 3D. That's not too bad. It looks pretty close to what you might expect. Um, there's always going to be a couple of things you want to adjust, generally to do with height. Uh, our trees are seven meters. That looks about okay. Um, yeah, that looks not too ridiculous. Um, my video recording here is dropping a few frames, but I'm on a any reasonable computer you should get a pretty good frame rate here. Um, one thing I will change is I think the pool is a bit more raised um, so I'm just going to raise that up, whoa, not, maybe not <laughs> maybe not to four meters, that would look um, a bit unattractive. I think we can make it a bit more realistic to what it's like in the real world at yeah, about that, what, what did I put it at about, uh, even still a little bit high there. Um, uh, just over a foot, about um, 40 centimetres. Okay, so it's, it's actually looking pretty nice. Looks not unlike the Bowling Green Park. Uh, again, I could have made those benches a bit more of a New York City grey. Oh, I can change the style of a tree, I think it might. Yeah, that looks... I don't know. <laughs> I can't remember exactly what the tree looks like in that location. I feel like it's green and bushy. And lastly, I'll just raise the height of the fence because um, it's defaulted to a size appropriate to like someone's front garden and not appropriate to a New York City park. So I'll make it a taller fence. And there we go. We've got um, Bowling Green Park, Lower Manhattan. Um, 
there's still bits of work that could be done to refine it, um, but it doesn't look too bad. Um, and we did it in um, just under 20 minutes. So Garden Planner, you can download a free trial version from a website, which is smallblueprinter.com. I'll put them in the comments under this video. And you can try it out and then you can buy the software. It doesn't cost very much. It's easy to use, as you can see. It allows you to do all the design in 2D, which is a lot easier for most people to think about, and um, then view it in 3D. Uh, thank you for watching.